Howdy folks, how are y'all doing? My name is Reese, and today I'm going to be walking you through the installation and setup of the FTB launcher on Linux, or in this case Pop! OS, though it should be applicable to most if not all Debian based distros. And outside of that, give it a shot! Your mileage may vary, you're on Linux, I assume you know a thing or two about computing and you can figure it out. But this is for folks who want to play really any Feed the Beast mod pack, but especially the recently released Stoneblock 3. So to get started, you're going to go to the link in the description to the Feed the Beast website, and it should take you directly to the app page. We're going to select Download for Linux, and if that's not available, you can click this here, and it'll give you the options for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. I should note that I will be doing an installation tutorial for all three of these operating systems, so if you need to know how to do this on Mac or Windows, head to the channel or check the link in the description. Those should be out around the same time as this video, but we're going to select Linux, and we're going to decide to download it, I guess, to our downloads. That makes perfect sense. That's where we normally download things to. And it's a pretty small file, so as you can see there, it downloaded immediately. So we're going to click up here, and uh, yeah, I've already done this once. <laughs> we're going to click our folder. I had to make sure I knew what I was doing so that I could do it properly for the video. So here is what we've downloaded here. And if we try to open this, it's going to give us a text file full of gobbledygook. And this is not super useful or helpful. So we're going to click cancel. We're going to exit out. We're going to not touch that. We're going to instead bring this over here. And in fact, I'll have it fill up that side of the screen. And we will open up a terminal window. And we'll have it fill up this side of the screen. So what we got to do here is we've got to right click on this file, go down to properties. So this is again, the file we just downloaded. Go to permissions and right here where it says execute, select that. Allow executing file as program. If this isn't here, I don't know how to help you. <laughs> you're on Linux and you're on your own. <laughs> but we're going to come over here now to the terminal window and we're going to type sudo or sudo if you're so inclined and then add a space. Then we're going to grab that file that we just downloaded and that we just allowed it to be ran as an executable. We're going to drag it over here. With that, make sure you do have the terminal window selected and then press enter. It'll prompt you for your super user password. After you've typed in your password and pressed enter, you'll get this lovely little box here, which is going to walk you through the installation. Now, you're going to want to take note of where it puts this folder. In this case, it's going to put it into slash opt slash FTBA. That can be useful to note if you want to uninstall this program at a later date. And I'll show you how to do that as well as I've had to do it as well. <laughs> Hit next, and it's going to start downloading everything you need to get the program up and running. Shouldn't take more than a few seconds, although that may vary by your internet connection and overall download speeds. And there we go. Now, by default, this little tab here that says Run FTB App is checked. In my experience, leaving that checked didn't actually run the FTB app, but we'll try again. We're going to click Finish. And it doesn't look like anything's going to happen. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and close both of these windows as we are done with them. We are done with the terminal window and we are done with our download. You can delete the download file as well if you are so inclined. Because it's not launching and it's not going to, I'm going to go into my application launcher and just launch the FTB app. And there we are. Now, as you can see, I'm already signed in because I previously had it but I'm going to sign myself out and walk you through how to get your account in here. So this is what it should look like fresh out of the box. You're gonna have an ad playing down here, you're gonna have some helpful links, and you're gonna have the featured mod packs, including Stoneblock 3. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go ahead and add our Microsoft account, or Mojang, but I'm pretty sure at this point, you have to do Microsoft. So we're gonna go to this question mark, and Mojang accounts must be migrated before March 10th, so you're going to want to get on that. In my case, I have a Microsoft account, so I will select Microsoft, and it's going to launch a login window. From here, we're going to select Microsoft again. From here, it's going to take us to a login page. We're going to enter first our email and then our password. And if you have 2FA, you might have to do that as well. And just like that, we should be signed in, just waiting on a response from Microsoft. Thank you, Papa Microsoft, for allowing me to use a game that I bought 10 years ago. You're wonderful. Now we are ready to install Stoneblock 3. If it doesn't come up here by default, and it should, but maybe you're watching this in the distant future and it's not a new and notable mod pack, you can go to browse and you can search from it from here using the search FTB mod packs. 
it's at the top of the results as it's new and fun and everyone's excited about it. So we're just going to click download and we can choose a stable release or we can actually go back all the way down to some earlier ones. Show unstable versions if you want to live life on the edge, but we, we don't want to do that. We're, we're going to just stick with the newest stable release. Click install and it'll be in the process of downloading all of the necessary files. I should note that this too may take a while depending on your download speeds. In fact, this is more likely to take longer than installing the FTP app itself, as there is a lot more going on in the mod pack. But once it's finished, you can click go to instances, which will take you to this little tab here. Basically, you've got your library tab, and uh, by default, go to instance will take you directly to FTB3. But when you relaunch the app, if you can't find it, it'll be here under library. Now, before we launch it, there's a couple of things we can do. We can go over here to settings, for example, and we can change the amount of memory assigned to this instance. Now, the default is probably plenty, so I don't recommend changing this unless you have some performance problems, in which case you can come up here and you can bump it up a little bit. Although I should also note that you really don't want to use more memory than you have assigned to your computer, and you really don't even want to use all of that. You, you want to keep it reasonable. For instance, if you only had four gigs of memory, I don't know if you're going to be able to get this running at all, but I definitely wouldn't go over two. If you have eight gigs, I wouldn't go over four. If you have more than eight gigs of memory, if you have 16, you can go up to eight. And then really beyond that, it's negligible how much it'll help outside of maybe you have a really big resource pack. Those tend to eat up a lot of memory. So you can play around in here, but don't expect this to be your, your, your fix-all. And don't expect dragging this up all the way to make your game run insanely well. If anything, it'll probably make your game run worse. I'm going to leave mine at 10 gigabytes for now. And then I'm going to go back and click play. And if all goes well, it should just launch the game. Really, the only thing you might run into here is is needing a different version of Java installed. I believe that Stoneblock 3 calls for Java version 17, 18, or 19. And in my own experimentation, I found 17 to be the most stable and most widely compatible. So if you don't have Java 17 installed now, go ahead and Google that, get it installed, and get that running. You're going to have a fantastic time. And there we go. We now have Stoneblock 3 up and running, and we can press F11 to go full speed with it and our full screen with it rather and we can hop in and start playing and oh my goodness it is way oversized we're going to want to go into options and uh definitely scale that down auto is out of control something more appropriate would probably be yeah four looks pretty good but there you are folks that's how you install and set up the feed the beast mod pack and get stone block 3 running on your debian based linux operating system hopefully it worked out for you if it did not comment down below. I can't guarantee that I can help you as I'm still relatively new to Linux. I just started using it uh, about a year ago now. It was last November and I've been doing all of my gaming on it since. It's fantastic, but I don't know everything and I'm sure that some folks in the, or in the comments might be able to help you better than I. And of course, you can always reach out to the FTB team. I'm sure they'll be happy to field your questions. Now, uninstallation. I know a way to do it. And we're going to navigate to the folder where it was installed. So for me, you might remember it was an opt FTBA. And inside of there is an uninstall script that you can run. So by default, you shouldn't need to go into properties and permissions and make it executable. It should be executable by default. We're going to launch up terminal and we're going to type in, oh goodness, sudo. So super user do. And then we're going to drag this file over here and then making sure we have this terminal window selected, we're going to click enter. And then we're going to type in our password and it's going to bring up the uninstaller. Now, the one thing I will say here is I did this before because I did a test install to make sure I knew what I was doing. And then after I deleted it, the my certain information was still there. It still had my login and it still had the one pack I downloaded to test with even after running this. So I'm assuming it leaves some files in place. I don't know where they are. If you could comment down below and let me know that, as well as the rest of the community, it would be appreciated. But that will remove the actual program and uh, quite a bit of its data from the system. And with that, we're done with today's video. Hope that you found it helpful. And if so, cool. <laughs> Thank you folks for watching. God bless you and I'll see you later. Goodbye.